Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ with ArtOfVisionResearch.com and today we're going to be talking about velocity painting. So, here's my first attempt. Here's my second attempt. So, this is a very different and unusual technique to adding things to your 3D prints by purely changing the speed of your 3D printer. Now this particular video is just going to be an introduction. I just wanted to sort of push this out there to the 3D printing community. It's not a very well-known thing yet. I feel like it will be a little more popular soon. Um, but a gentleman by the name of Jason Perez, he runs his own YouTube channel. It's called Pattern to Print. This is the gentleman. And credits go out to uh, these guys down here for creating right there creating the actual um, technique and the GUI eye, or the GUI that you can interface so originally um, I was at the uh, Matter Hackers meetup and Jason was there and he had a, a picture that was sort of similar to this but it was taller and it was a, a portrait um, you know and here's an example of, uh, of a, a, a little bit better one than what than what these are and I saw that and I thought that's pretty cool and he was standing there and he said yeah you do that just by changing the speed of the printer so when you slice this file it's actually just a normal you know looking thing and then you superimpose an image on top of that and it actually changes the speed of its printing in order to create these images inside of your or through your print now the interesting thing here is that when you project into a space it projects all the way through so what you see on one side you see all the way through the print the red is really hard to see isn't it let's do this one as a better example so here you can see it says rwgresearch.com and on the reverse side and on the bottom side and everywhere in between it also goes all the way through. So this has its applications and it's not you know meant for everything but if you wanted to do some pretty cool paintings here is one of the the better ones and I'll show these in a in a better light but you can clearly see the image embedded in there and again that's purely done through changing the speed so basically brief introduction here I'm going to show you what I've done and show you the problems that I've had give you the links down in the description so you can go try this yourself you must okay according to the rules of this call it velocity painting which is the perfect name because it's painting using the velocity of the printhead now you can do this on round objects as well so I do not have any uh, round objects. You can do cylinders, you can project it different ways, you can do all kinds of things. And I highly recommend you go watch Jason, Jason's videos, okay, because he goes through the whole thing and explains what's what and how to do it and some of the pros and cons and different things. And he's made several videos now on this velocity painting. I highly recommend you go watch all of them. One of them, he actually ended up making a light shade for a lamp that, that uh, I think this cat or something knocked over. So actually practically using this in an application. The other thing is, is if you have a round object, like something like this, you can emboss the actual image into that all the way around. And I'll show you some pictures right now of what other people have done. So one of the other individuals you can check out is Joe at 3D Making Noob. And he actually originally was working with Jason to make this really cool vase. And uh, here's a couple of images of that. So go check his channel out. He does uh, very great work in 3D printing and such. Um, so let me show you what I've done here and give you an idea of the problems that I've been having. So let me give you an example of one of the first things I tried printing. So you can't see really a whole lot of what's going on here until you get the light just right. And you can actually see what is going on there. And it is basically the same thing as this. This is a, a better version that I got working. I was having extrusion problems so there actually ended up being holes in the whole entire print. 
which makes it kind of interesting but useless. And here is a uh, Penrose tiling that looks much, much nicer, and this one actually turned out. And that just has to do with tweaking the speeds and seeing what's going on. And most of the time, people are using translucent filaments to make this work. However, you can also make it work in solids, depending on what you're trying to do. So if you're just imprinting a, a pattern, then I think this works really well. Now one of the things to remember is that it's just black and white. So it says it'll do grayscale. However, it feels more like just black and white. On this one, I ended up doing just black and white. And this is a much better looking print than, let's say, one of these, which I did not do black and white. You, can, you can't really even see what's going on there. So real briefly, let me explain to you how this works. You basically create a template. So in my case, I just have a, a base and a stand here to, to act as a, a 4x6 photo, actually. Same size as a 4x6 photo. And what you do is you just slice this like you normally would with all the same speed. Don't change speeds. All the same speed except for the bottom layers can be different. Um, and then you just dump this into the um, GUI for velocity painting. And what it does is it projects through one of the axes or on a cylinder or a sphere. And there's a few other options in there which are um, a little bit more... I need to play around with them a little bit more to give you more information on them. But what it does is it just rewrites the G-code, which is pretty cool the way it does it. It just rewrites all the speeds and changes the speed as it goes along the path. Um, it's a pretty simple process, but it takes a lot of uh, playing with to get right. So I had a lot of problems with it going too fast or too slow. If it goes too fast, you start getting, you start getting holes or problems with the print. And if it goes too slow, <clears throat> well, I haven't had too much problems with, with too slow, but I think if you had a, a very thick piece like something like this, you know, you can see how it slowed down and extruded it out. which worked really well. But on some of these when it was going when it was going too fast, you can see how it ripped the uh, or you know, to, the filament didn't actually lay down. So there's this like perfect balance in order to get this to work right. Um, so it just projects it through there and then rewrites the code and when you print it, it slows down or speeds up. It's a pretty simple process, but I highly recommend using black and white. Um, the grayscale um, if you've got too much highs or too much lows, it doesn't it it doesn't speed up or slow down enough to make a difference in your print. So I recommend changing everything to black and white. Uh, and I think what Jason did is turned it into more of like a sketch black and white, which made his velocity painting turn out much better in my opinion. I cannot get mine to turn out quite as nice as his. So um, you can jump on over to his YouTube channel and ask him questions on his videos. He's very responsive and uh, should be able to help with any details that are quite confusing still. But um, go over to the website, Velocity Painting. I'll put that link in the description. Read everything on the website. That'll help you along the way. So what I wanted to do is print these little phone stands and in a very you know easy way to apply a logo, or in this case, rwgresearch.com, right into it is just use this velocity painting. You know, the bad thing is, is it projects it through the whole model, which isn't a huge problem, but tweaking and tuning this thing to get it to work worked out fine. So here's an example of a, um, of a non-velocity painting, and here's a velocity painting. Now, the velocity painting here is extruded out. You could flip that and make it extrude N. But in general, um, you know, there's sort of your difference. So, depends on what you want. I don't mind it projected through the whole thing, but it does look better when it's not. So, again, has its applications. Alright, so as you can see here, I tried many, many different versions. And each one of them, you know, really turned out slightly different. And it was not an easy task to, to figure out sort of what works best. However, playing with it for quite a long time, I did get a few of them that I, I liked. Like this one's not too bad, but you really can't see what's going on as much as I would like. 
that one there is really what you need to do. So I made that one really thin and I made it just black and white and you can really see the painting. So, you know, playing with the photograph is probably the best thing you can you can do. Obviously, nothing in that one. And hardly anything in that one. And then of course the clear er, the non-opaque ones. You can see the you can really see how how cool the pattern looks in the right light. But if you were to turn it this way, you can't really even see what it is. So I, I think this one kind of has its application, depending on, uh, depending on how, how you want to use this. This is sort of, you know, arrives out of nothing. It's just actually pretty cool. So these are actually the DDD Materials Tungsten Nozzle Image. Turned it into, uh, well no I didn't turn it into black and white, it's sort of already black and white just to see what it would look like. So they'll recognize, Chris will recognize that, but most of you won't. But yeah, so I think the best result is turning your image into black and white. And this one kind of looks funny because the, there was a shadow casted. So when you take the images, if you're going to do a portrait, uh, try not to look for stuff with shadows. Make sure you got good lighting and, and lighting just correct. And it's actually, I really actually like this. So I'll be playing around with more black and white versions. But for now, I just wanted to sort of get the information out to you about velocity painting because it's pretty cool. It's actually really cool. So here is the selection of phone holders. These two were completely re-engineered and redrawn and just embroidered with the the name in them. And these were actually done with velocity painting. So you can see if you get it right, you can really get it right and it really looks good. And there's nothing wrong with with embroidering something like that. However, again, it goes through the whole print, so it's a bit funny. But you can see how just playing with the settings and getting things just right really uh, really changed the output. This one is the RWG Research logo. It's actually one of the first things I did. You can see that there, but not very clear. Again, black and white versus color. So that was color image, and it was trying to do grayscale, which doesn't really work well. This was truly black and white worked fine and these again were totally separate I actually uh, you know the results can be pretty good if you get the tuning right so you really can't see what's going on that's purely done by changing speed so you don't ever change the actual you know print parameters it just changes the speed and it leaves the extrusion the same which is why tuning this thing and getting it just right and having holes and stuff are uh, are the way it works so you just got to play with it, see what you can do. So I'm going to actually post these um, particular STL files for these different sizes. And I'll make up a few more other sizes. I'll post them on my Thingiverse. So just look for velocity painting on Thingiverse for pictures. Um, different thicknesses. Um, these were, I think, t t uh, two millimeter. And these might have been two millimeter. And then something like this really thin one was actually only one millimeter. You can't make these really tall. They'll start uh, wobbling around and you'll not get good prints. But um, you can achieve that. Alright, well I hope this was interesting to you. I highly recommend at least playing with this. But do note that this is all not finished developed stuff. And so you make sure, you, you really need to make sure you check your G-code in some sort of a G-code viewer. Um, Simplified 3D seems to work pretty good for the most part. And there may be some other G-code viewers. If there's more out there, let me know what you guys use. Um, and you can view your G-code and just make sure it all looks correct. Um, but yeah, go watch Jason Jason's videos to get more details and understanding of how this stuff works. And he will actually help you a lot better than what I can. But I just wanted to show you guys what you can do with it. Um, and it's pretty cool. It's a really cool thing. And I think if you're making vases or cups, that's really like the best application for this um, for now. But there's always something new to do. Alright, see you later.